Zaki Ibrahim knows all too well. He was just seven years old when his father, El Sayed Nasser, shot and killed a prominent rabbi. His father also helped plan the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Imagine this. Ibrahim grew up in that home. He struggled to carve out his own identity from, for himself, away from the extremism his father had adopted. But he ultimately embraced a message of nonviolence instead. He's here with me now, Zach Ibrahim, author of the book, The Terrorist Stun, A Story of Choice. First of all, such a brave thing to do. This was not easy. You have lived a very difficult life. The story is heartbreaking. You were in poverty. You dealt with extremism in your home. You dealt with violence in your home. You chose peace. Why did you write this book? Well, thank you very much, first of all. Um, you know, one of the main reasons that I, I wanted to write it was I wanted to show people what it was like to grow up in that ideology, to be a child indoctrinated into, you know, this level of extremism. But I also wanted to show people um, that although I had been subjected to this fanatical ideology that I didn't become fanaticized mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so what does that say about the vast majority of Muslim people around the world who aren't exposed to There's that level of, of extremism. There's millions of Muslims around the world and yeah. the percentage that have become radicalized is small. Very small uh, and, and the vast majority of people are never even exposed to that level of fanaticism. What was the um, exposure in your home like? He was your father and you talk very openly and movingly about how he was your father. You were a young boy and saw him as your dad who played with you and threw a ball around with you. But then as you grew older, you saw this extremism. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, we did very normal things growing up, going to the park and, you know, playing baseball or soccer or the amusement park. Um, it wasn't until shortly before he went to prison that I started to see a change in him. Uh, and even though I was such a young kid, it was still very noticeable. Um, and, uh, you know, he used to try and explain lessons to me like, um, you know, all Jewish people are evil um, or that uh, any non-Muslim um, was a bad influence. Uh, and so I, I grew up thinking that anyone outside of this small bubble that I lived in was a potential danger. When did that change for you? Um, I was about 18 or 19 years old, Interesting. actually. Interesting. Um, and uh, I started working at Bush Gardens in Florida. And, uh, and I went from being this very isolated kid who was bullied very badly in school and, and dealt with domestic violence at home to buying a car for the first time. Some independence. And, 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 independence yeah. of, and independence of thought, too. Yes, absolutely. And I started working at Bush Gardens and I was exposed to so many people from so many different backgrounds, religious backgrounds, um, you know, cultural backgrounds. And, uh, and I, I just, I didn't want, because I had been bullied very badly, I had a, a great sense of empathy in me. And I couldn't treat people who were nice to me regardless of their race, religion, or sexual orientation in any other way than how I wanted to be treated. And I made a conscious effort from that point on to try and, um, you know, shed a lot of those lessons that I've been taught. I want your reaction. We are seeing horrific images of what is happening, and we know the news has been following the story of James Foley and, and Stephen Sotloff, the, the horrible actions of ISIS um, in Iraq and Syria. What does that bring up in you? Um, you know, it makes me very sad, first of all. Um, you know, it's obviously a huge loss to their families. And, you know, <clears throat> groups like ISIS are very adept at using social media and the Internet to spread their message of propaganda. I think that's one of the main reasons that they're using Westerners in their videos to try and gain attention with Western audiences to try to strike fear into their hearts. Um, this isn't anything new. Al-Qaeda was the exact That's same true. way. In the early, mid-90s, they were light years ahead of most groups when it came to using social media to force their agenda. And, you know, frankly, I just feel lucky that I get to take all of these negative experiences and hopefully make something positive out of it. 